We've come together today to work on relationships and communication. Over the years, I've spent a great deal of time actually studying communication and relationships, specifically in the workplace, because I wanted personally to remove the stress and anxiety and the unnecessary mistakes that take place when people come together for work. So it was really, I did it for my own benefit. And it really is amazing what you have going on here at Carlson. What you all accomplished in 2018, the growth, the way you're impacting your, in your industry, it really just is quite incredible. So I wanted to start today with a question. Why do you think that has taken place? Why do you think there's been such phenomenal growth at Carlson? Do good work. Excellent. Yep. You had the same good, the same lead guys for a good amount of time. Yep. Excellent. Economy boost. Definitely involved. The economy hasn't quite grown the way you guys have, though. But yeah, the economy boost has definitely been helpful. What else? Reputation as a company. Excellent. I'd like to put forward something a little bit different. En encapsulate everything that you've said but put forward something a little bit different. It's because of all of you. It's the relationships that you have with your clients. It's the relationships that you have with each other. It's the relationship that you have with work. It's because of all of you that this growth has taken place. It's like everything that has come together is kind of a perfect storm to create this phenomenal growth. And whenever companies grow, Whenever people grow, there can be issues that need to be worked out that didn't get worked out before. So 10 years ago, Ben walked around with everything in his head. And if you, had, if you needed to know anything, you just went and asked Ben. If you didn't know a particular aspect of your job or something that needed to be done on a job. And as the company continued to grow, that worked with a few individuals, Jeremy, Leonard, um, now you've gotten to the point where that won't work any longer, okay? It's just not going to work. So Ben and Joe asked me to put together a system of communication for you. And what we've done is kind of systemized it. And I'm really excited about having the opportunity to present it to you. I'm also excited about being involved with Carlson Glass because I've been involved with some pretty spectacular things over the years during my working career. I remember back in 1988 was the beginning of cell phones. Okay, that's when they first started to come out with cell phones. And I was the foreman of a small tool company in Illinois. And these two businessmen approached us, came to our shop to discuss mobile phone antennas at the time. And back then, they, they you know, it was mostly car phones is what people were using. And these gentlemen had a, a company they called the Antenna Company, and they came to see us, and it was two gentlemen, startup company, and they had only about 1,500 square feet. They were importing parts from Korea, and Korea at the time could not make Hyundais, all right? They, they weren't that skilled yet. And they were importing these parts and assembling them and then, and then selling them. And this is something that I'd like you to get today. Joe mentioned it in the introduction, thank you, is to suspend all judgment because that's one of the great lessons I got out of this experience. Suspend all judgment and try not to run everything you learned today through your view of the world. Because I got to tell you, there were a lot of things to judge in this particular situation. First of all, one of the gentlemen wasn't your typical businessman. He had a, a physical handicap. He could hardly walk. He had a speech impediment. And he um, also you know, was just very different. And I, later I would find out how him being different was so important and how it was so valuable. So the other thing that was going on is at the time, I mean, car phones, they sucked. I mean, they just sucked. They dropped the calls all the time. They, it was hard to hear the other person on the line. Half the time they couldn't get service. And they were importing these three cheesy parts from Korea and assembling them, and they were um, breaking on them all the time. You know, honestly, I couldn't believe that they'd actually sold any of them. Okay, 
So I had to deal with that voice in my head, right? You know that voice in your head, right? That voice in my head of doubt, there are nothing is ever going to come out of this. Nothing good is ever going to come out of this. This is ridiculous, right? But for some reason, I was able to put that voice at bay, and we continued to meet over the course of a week. And they were, we were sitting in the office one day, in the tool room office, and the four of us were in there, the owner of the company, myself, I was the foreman at the time, and the two gentlemen in the startup when we were having a conversation about these parts. And the owner just blurted out, you know, we were talking about the problems with assembly, and the owner just blurted out out of nowhere. He said, why don't you just mold them all in one piece? And again, that voice in my head, because I was the plastics expert in attendance, and my mind started coming up with all of these reasons why you couldn't do it. You know, the tooling, um, the sink and the plastic, all these different reasons why you couldn't mold these in one piece. So I picked the, the most logical one and the most difficult situation to overcome, and I put it forward, and I asked about it. At which point, this guy was a mechanical genius, you know, just one of those people, he was just a mechanical genius, and he solved the problem right then. And the gentleman the, in the startup, the president, he like sat up in his seat, and you could see the light bulb go on. I said, okay, suspend judgment. I started to come up. I took the three plastic parts. I started to come up with one reason after another why this wasn't going to work. At which point, because he was a mechanical genius, he pretty much just ran through and solved every one of them. I solved a couple of them. And it was so funny because the president of the company sat up in his chair and he had this like great big grin on his face like it was his birthday and he didn't have to share the cake with anyone. You know? And uh, he, he could see the magic taking place. That's what was happening. This magic was taking place. And what took place over the next two years in that company and our company was nothing short of phenomenal as a result of that conversation. Now, Google has studied teams like the teams you guys, the team you guys have. They have studied teams and they have found out that obviously what took place in that office that day has to do with communication, but it also has to do with something called psychological safety. And we're going to be getting into that today and how just very important it is to make your lives and your jobs as easy as possible and a lot more fun. Okay? So they, we're going to get into defining psychological safety in just a minute. 